Welcome back, Auto Trendline fans. Um, I've got an update to this Auto Trendline study, which normally would draw trendlines um, out the way um, I've found they, they get the most respect, which is from peak to peak, and then from that peak to the next peak, and from that peak to the next peak. Um, but that doesn't mean these lines, like once they break, it doesn't mean that they're they're pointless anymore. And so I would draw in historical trend lines that, that were important. So at this point, um, this would have been a trend line from here to here, uh, but when it broke, I would draw this this one in manually to see um, after it breaks here whether it gets respect again. And so you can see price dropping to below that trend line. It struggles to get above it and then rejects back down again, breaks back above it and then struggles at the trend line again. <clears throat> so clearly, this this historical trend line here is still. Um, relevant to price action, even though it's been broken. Um, so I would draw those in manually, and I didn't really think there was a way to draw them in um, programmatically in the study. Um, and it turns out that when you spend some time thinking about why you draw the, the historical lines that you do, you can you can codify what's important about them. And it turns out there were three major types of lines that I were or that I that I typically draw. Um, one is when there are spikes. So if there's a peak or a trough, you can see this is a pretty significant move here, and it bounced off of it. So I'd like to draw that line in as a historical line because, sure enough, price interacts with it. It comes back down here, it crashes through, but you can see that it pauses here. This is where it pauses. Um, another one is. Uh, looking for significant ignition candles. So if you have like this, this one right here is, is an example um, where this is a, a significant candle that, you know, provided a lot of, of movement and, and that's defined generally by the size of the, of the body. Um, but it's also, uh, I believe the formula that I'm using is relative volume standard deviations, um, which is, is a little more subtle, but what it boils down to is this is a big deal. Um, so I'll draw a line there and you can see that, that even though it breaks through, price tends to re respect this line and when it um, interacts with it, it definitely is important later on. Like it breaks back above it, and then you know breaks back down below it. So this is uh, another another one. Um, the the last kind of line that I draw is the shallowest trend line off of the most recent break. So this is the most recent break. Um, broke through and then you know picks it up again and is now going to interact with it. However, it's going to interact with it. Uh, but I like to know like through the most recent break what uh, what price action is doing because that tells me whether it's 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 bullish or bearish at that point. Um, and this is where uh, trend lines become way more important than levels um, in determining regular movement because like levels, like horizontal levels, work the same way with, with price action, right? When it when it hits, bounces off of one, you know that's a significant level. When it breaks through it and then retests it from the bottom, um, you know, that that that's a, a good place to maybe enter short or something. Um, same thing is true of these these trend lines. They're, they're, you can think of them as historical... Um, just price action um, off of off of horizontal levels only diagonal and it works the exact same way in terms of how price interacts with these trend lines um, and, and in fact like those horizontal trend lines are basically um, tr the the horizontal price lines are, are basically old 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 trend lines that go all the way back so far that they look horizontal now um, and that's just sort of a general like a general theory of of trend line action how it works um so hor like his, the his, the levels are also trend lines they're just horizontal um you can think of them that way and then it helps to to sort of understand why these trend lines are working um because the horizontal ones are just a specific case of the more generalized trend line um which you know tend to be diagonal so anyway, of those three kinds, um, I, I figured out a way to draw those in programmatically, and you can see they're overlapping here. Um, you've got the 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 short line is an igniter candle, so this was an igniter candle, and it it um, creates this little uh, short dashed line. Um, then you've got um, the and actually, I think it was this igniter candle that drew it. Um, then you've got the the spike lines, which are where price comes down, and those are the, the medium dash lines. And then the long dash lines are these ones that are the last one to break before the final, the you know, the current unbroken line. And that is what these two are: is that that shallowest trend line plus this peak, and they're just overlapping. Um, so the study out of the box, you can't unfortunately program um, transparency. So you have to go into the study to 
manually do that um, if you if you want to see that. Otherwise, you know, you'll see a super long dash that doesn't make any sense, and you know that that's got to be a superimposition of two things. Uh, but if you go down to the bottom, all of my studies do this, where you have globals and they're set up to be um, individually changeable. So these are the new ones, the historical peak color, igniter color, and historical long color. These are all the, the history lines. Um, and you just go into the more and then this tab and then make it transparent. And so 60% um, for me is is pretty good. I feel like that's that's um, fades them back enough so that it's not as visually chaotic. Um, but I am able to like read through the chaos, so I like I like chaos. Um, you can also dim them back further if, if you want, or dim them back different levels depending on how important you think they are. Um, the other thing you can do is just turn them on and off. If you don't think that historical igniter lines are are that useful for you, you can just turn it off. Um, same thing with you know historical peak trend lines, um, and and you can also change the sensitivity of the peak detection. Um, so this this peak range is going to be ten bars before or after the peak. So if you set this lower, you're going to pick up a lot more peaks, and it's going to change where this is. So you want it sort of relative to the chart where where. Um, you don't necessarily like this one. If you set it to like five, then it would pick up stuff as small as this. Um, you know, it would pick up this if you set two, which is an even smaller peak. But if you set it to 10, then it's got to get 10 bars on either side. And so, you know, you can set it as, as high as you want. And the higher you set it, the fewer um, spikes it'll, it'll pick up. Because then it needs to be a really significant spike in order for it to, to, to pick up. So this one, for example, wouldn't get picked up because it's... Um, within that range, it's it's not the the highest within ten bars on either side. It's only the highest on one side. Um, and then, I mean, the other the other stuff here. I've got other videos that that go through like these these um, pieces that you know you can use body instead of wick. So these are using wick to wick, but you can also do it from body to body, which will give you different trend lines, different respect. Um, it's useful. I found that it's more useful to do wicks, but um, Try it with bodies. It's actually pretty cool to see how how well that gets respected as well. Um, then there's the the alert is just whether or not price breaks through one of these major lines. Um, the line style is the line style of the major line, not the minor line. So that's solid here, but you can set it to whatever you want. Um, use range. It's chart range by default, so it'll use the entire like every everything within this this chart. It's going to try and draw lines on, but you can limit that using this range with these other ones. So days. Uh, let's say you have a 180 day chart, but you only want to draw the last 10 days. So you'd pick days and then set range to 10. Um, or if you pick bars, then it'll only um, pick up for this. In this case, it'll pick up the last 100 bars from where the price action is and then start drawing lines there. Um, it will, uh, and then after that, then you get into the, the new historical trend line stuff. Um, so you can customize this. Um, and actually, if you just turn these off, this like <laughs> this is going to give you the exact same thing that you had before. Um, with the original trend lines uh, without history, which is is um, kind of a lobotomized view, uh, but this is just the regular trend line study. So this this should look familiar to, to everybody. But when you start turning them back on, um, like I, I really like the historical peak trend lines, for example. And if I only want that, I can have only those ones show, um, and and then you can sort of see and and, and play with it to see which ones. Um, you you like the best because for me it's it's all three of these. This is this I tend to pick these. Um, anyway, I wouldn't necessarily draw everything the study draws, but studies are not smart like people are. Um, but you need to find your own patterns anyway and, and see how these, these historical trend lines get this kind of long-term respect um, over, over time and how they work. And I've got a couple of other, other videos you can uh, look through to see, um, to, to learn about trend lines and how, how to draw them, how they can show you how to get in and out of trades. Um, it's actually really cool stuff to, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily, you can't predict like, well, it's going to bounce off of this, but if you know where, where price is likely to have resistance, you can use that either to scalp off of, um, or if it coincides with, with, you know, horizontal levels, then that may be a good place to, to retest, um, if there's also a trend line there. Um, so there's a lot of different reasons to, to use trend lines. And so these historical trend lines that it's drawing in, are the ones that I think are the most important, um, but your mileage may vary for how useful these actually are to you versus how complicated it makes your charts. Um, but when you tend to, to zoom in a little bit, it gets a lot less complicated and makes things a lot clearer um, because you know price comes back up to this spot, 
and bounces off of this historical trend line. So that before this line was there, it had broken through another line that would have been here. Um, and once it broke through that and it stopped here, you could kind of tell that it's not going to make it back up to the next one. And that's when it draws in this line and it doesn't actually even reach past this line all the way down. And this is a what four hour, 30 day chart. Um, so this kind of gives you major trends. I like the four hour for, for plotting out um, uh, where I'm going to have scalps. And, and like this, for example, I totally played this line. I mean, it created the trend line here. And then um, I used that bounce to, to within here to um, decide that I was going to be trying to go long. Um, and it eventually did, uh, although it went down a lot further than I expected it to. Um, but on the lower charts, this makes a lot more sense. And you can see a lot more interaction for scalping along this, this trend line on a one minute or a, you know 10 minute um, versus the, the four hour. Um, so if you use if you use it, you like it, you have suggestions, let me know. Um, it's always great to hear that people are using using the studies that I'm, you know, I'm making them for myself and just kind of toss them over the fence. So um, if you like it, you know, let me know. Enjoy.